Okay, then first, uh, hello everybody. Um, thank you for attending our talk. <laughs> um, in, in our talk, uh, we, we speak about hackers, about uh, some different kind of attack, and all of them uh, will be focused on software development processes, uh, workflows, uh, and so on. Um, we'll try to, 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 to show different kind of attacks and sometimes uh, different kind of defenses, right? Okay, a bit of spam about us. <laughs> um, I think that nothing more to add, or do you want to add something, Cesar? Uh, yes, I work on BBVA Next Technologies. It's a company of a uh, technology company from a Spanish bank. And uh, I work for a long time with uh, data. And now I'm focused uh, more on uh, security over data and uh, security itself. And I, I must say that it's an exciting uh, work nowadays. I learning a lot. <laughs> Okay, nice. Um, I only will add that I'm currently working as a, a security research API consultant for 32 grants, um, a company uh, focused on security in, in the APIs. And that's it. Uh, you can uh, get in touch with uh, our Twitter, uh, with uh, LinkedIn. You can, it's, it's this in, in this slide. Or, okay, done. First, <laughs> a very big disclaimer about our talk because uh, uh, we will see some real attacks um, that we are uh, we are our own opinions and uh, present are not by um, a company that are employees uh, to us, right? <laughs> it's legal reasons, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's let's start with the core concepts. So let's take a 10,000 feet look at the modern software pipelines. Next. Okay, first of all, what continuous integration is? Continuous integration tools born from groups of developers while they work on the same code by base and they can talk each other. First, we work in order to keep correctness, even after several code merges. Then test drive development come to town. Things start to be more interesting. Now we can be sure that our code is consistent and works on the most important parts. Also, you have there the Wikipedia definition that it's a pretty boring thing. Okay, next. <laughs> okay, what continuous deployment is? In fact, developers' confidence was so high that they start to automate push to production machines without human intervention or manual revision. Testing techniques become, uh, become the um, safety net of developers. Now we feel safe about our code. Every commit now has high probabilities to trigger a new deploy to production. And without the old struggle between developers and operations, new exciting techniques born, like A-B testing, blue-green deployment, zero downtime, all that stuff. More aggressive and fast automatic deploy techniques start to become very popular. And that's all the long story short. Next. OK. A little note about difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment. Nowadays, we have an increasing number of continuous deployment projects and also some continuous delivery projects. The main difference between them is that on delivery ones, we keep a manual process to trigger production deployment. You can see in the red square. Okay, Nani, go ahead. Uh, my turn. Okay. Um... Okay, we're talking uh, about a bit uh, modern workflow and infrastructure and so on. Um, at this point, we are review uh, what happened in, in legacy systems, right? Legacy systems and legacy environments. That, right? Okay, let's see it. Okay, the, the first scenario is when we ha have not a CD or continuous deployment, right? Um, in this case, 
Sorry. <laughs> um, in this case, uh, we have an ops team that are responsible to promote software right, uh, to production environment. Right? Obviously, this is a big uh, bottleneck uh, and need more people in ops team to manage the process uh, to deploy new releases to, to production. Right? But it could be worse that if we don't have uh, C, C, right? If we, let's remove that uh, case, uh, that uh, element. No, uh, that user upload to the control system, to the software control system, then will be sent to the ops team, right? This is a bit more, uh, a bit more, um, Hard. I'm the Star Wars. I mean, hard is another thing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and finally, we are on the hell. The hell is where the developers push their code directly to production. This is a very good scenario for hackers because uh, they can find a lot of mm, issues, a lot of flaws, a lot of both, probably in, in production systems. Yes, uh, manually. We have to say that developers manually deploy code with no technique, no automations, and that's a very bad scenario. Right. Cesar, your turn. Okay. Um, some reasons, next. Why? We bother about this. Okay, we bother because reaching our customers more frequently and faster is a competitive advantage. Software leaders show everyone that these kind of techniques are extremely profitable. Instead of spend several months planning and develop software, now we can change it in a matter of hours safely. More extreme continuous deployment techniques persuade that every commit, every commit hits production, triggering tens of deploys on a single day. Next. But how, how be, this becomes so popular nowadays is uncommon find a company that is not using one of these tools to auto automate at least one software project. In fact, new jobs emerge around these tools like DevOps, software reliability engineers, set DevOps, that, all that kind of stuff. The use of these tools is increasing year after year. So let's talk about the lingo. Next. What a pipeline is. In order to achieve tens of deployments every single day, we need to decrease human factor to its minimum. To do this, we need to execute several software in a specific sequence. This sequence calls pipeline. A pipeline is made of several steps that can use some programs, and usually it's named after their goal, like compile software, testing, or maybe tag tagging other tag, you know. Okay, next. What a DevOps is? The struggle between the development and operations became, became so intense that we need to change our company culture to achieve of our objectives quickly. And from this close collaboration born a new being, the mighty DevOps, the one who will bring understanding between these two worlds and its name is DevOps. These new partners end with shared responsibilities with usually no one cares about in the past scenario, when you have developers and operations, sometimes these two teams uh, fight each other for uh, who is the book blame of. Okay, next. Uh, now we add another word, is SEC. What a DevSecOps is. Uh, the next obstacle in our way to faster deployment was security. In the same way that development and operations did it before, now security must change their mindset to become allies. Security, usually it's seen as a stopper in several projects, involves security from the beginning, increase development speed and reduce the risks, leading us now to modern techniques like threat modeling. Next. 
Okay, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, after that, uh, we'll let's review some uh, some typical setups or infrastructures um, and sort of um, and workflow. There, there is some typical step uh, when we build software, right? Uh, the building workflow it's uh, it itself is like uh, like the picture we can see this slide, right? From code, commit, see pipeline, CD, right? But it's not enough. Uh, then we split each step at name them. We include all, uh, sorry, <laughs> we include all the development step and also we added user and prediction step cause uh, they are implied in the software development. Um, now, uh, now we put uh, our names to software that could be used in, in each step, right? Uh, we can see that uh, typical software component of software uh, pieces are uh, GitHub, Travis, Jenkins, Bitbucket, GitLab, um, and yes, FTP, because <laughs> sometimes the de developers of software processes are a bit all processes, software finally, and seen an FTP uh, server. But when we create the software, uh, this is a scenario is not enough. We need more pieces. And the pieces, the missing pieces, are the deployment provider, of course. Um, and also, also, as you can see in the right um, of the slide, uh, you also have your own, your own server and your uh, different provider. Right? Um, this is the, um, the big picture. This is the, the photo that we use to explain each attack in different steps following uh, this uh, scenario, right? Cesar? Okay. Now we are ready to deep dive into the burning hells of pipelines. Go next. We start in source code. If we look our treasure map, we are now on the left side of it, okay? Go for it. First of all, or first foe, the ID leaks, the Internet Development Environment leaks. Please don't leak the tiles of your internal deployment to the internet. Some details can be clues to find security holes. When you are using an integrated development environment, usually these put some files on your project and these files must be ignored. You can see there on, on this picture that you can access to the code styles and some gotcha files, product workspace file, files, and, and the compiler, the encodings, a lot of very interesting things to know how your company works internally and is very risky. Okay, go to next. The bad role granularity. Okay. Sometimes you have no choice to set up several roles, or maybe you can set permissions on files or brands. If this is the case, you are suffering bar role granularity. Some can delete your production code directly or using other techniques, and you never know who was. If you can control how your files are managed, somewhere by error or someone, someone evil can delete all your work and also even change your uh, source code history. And you never know that that was uh, happening. Um, uh, uh, a little note there, this can be even worse because all this stuff can happen in the uh, developer computer. Um, we say later, well, we will see later more about this, but some kind of uh, developers tend to uh, keep the code only on their computer. And this is also a very risky thing. Okay, yeah. next. This is um, the dev machine as only source code server. As I say moments before, um, you must ask yourself all these questions. There is a cowboy coder in your team. Right. Let's see that beautiful image, Danny. 
Okay, sorry. <laughs> no, that's it. Have you, uh, <laughs> you have very tiny software in production only managed by one developer. You have a guru developer. You have the current security at the workplace. And also are your developers bring, bring your own device to your office. All these things um, lead us to this risky thing uh, and we must avoid it. We need to keep safe our source code, made backups, and keep the work the workplace safe. Also, um, it's a good practice that more than one person is aware of anything that is used in production. If you have this kind of cowboy coder that is very active and do a lot of things, when this person leaves your company, can be a very, very a problem, a very big problem because they leave the, the know-how of all these things. Okay, let's go next. Okay, that's another typical side where uh, developers go when they have is Stack Overflow. Uh, this was the copy and paste the source code that people write on Stack Overflow, but we know that they did. <laughs> That's the reason because uh, we can find news like this. The most copied pieces Java code on the Stack Overflow contains an error, but is if the piece of the uh, of code has a small Trojan, it was copied too. I think that the answer could be probably the um, uh, please don't copy and paste source code without analyze it, right? <laughs> Okay, uh, our libraries are low. Um, developers uh, very often are trusted and usually don't check open source library that they use. Uh, they don't check if library have vulnerabilities or Trojan or if they have some CBE uh, in, the, in the version that they, they are using. Um, as you can see, okay, mm, let me... Well, sorry, I'm turning into I, right. <laughs> uh, in this news, uh, we can see that popular JavaScript library was infected with a malware that is still Bitcoin from, from wallet, right? This, the, this kind of things happens and we, uh, there. Um, secret and leaks. Uh, something people forgot that a did repository certain contains sensitive data. Sometimes by neglect, and other because they don't know that Git is not a backup system. <laughs> they put sensitive data into them. Uh, in the slide, okay, let me pass. Yeah, in the slide, in the slice picture, we can see real sensitive data on public GitHub repository. And then I invite you to, to use the GitHub uh, search uh, inbox, um, put this, this string on something similar, and you can find a lot of repositories with sensitive data. Be careful with that. Very popular, this okay. one. Yeah, this and, and, and very <laughs> useful, useful, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we move from the building a step, right? The, uh, move, uh, move right. Um, following the global diagram on our wheel in the middle left and building a step. Right. Now we are in control artifact repository. Okay. The first case in the building step that we'll cover is the right, after artifact repository control because um, we should control, not, not should, we must control what the developer can publish to artifact repository. Otherwise, they can publish malicious artifacts. What happens if they publish a Trojanese uh, artifact? Uh, what happens when production system deploy this artifact to production environment, right? That what happen is that we, we will have a backdoor in our production system, and this always is a not good business, right? Please uh, check it. 
Okay, then the environment leak. It's very common in CCD system. It stores sensitive data, um, uh, like production keys, credential, even Amazon secret keys and so on, uh, in variables. Usually, uh, usually uh, this data will pass to C, uh, as I told you, in environments uh, variables. Um, if these variables are not protected in your C system, someone with access to the, the C or CD system can print these variables. And of course, if they print these variables, uh, this, uh, they can read the content of the variables. It's very obvious, right? But all of C, CD system have a solution to protect the variables that contain sensitive data. As you can see the, in these pictures, GitLab, for example, for example, um, a core uh, or have a special kind of environment variable that they call as protected. And GitHub has these special environment variables that they call secrets. Um, this type of variable are not shown in the CCD a console, even if a user yeah, print their content and want to read the, their content. And then, please, it's very easy, then use it. OK, this is a very nice um, attack. is a reverse shell in the pipeline. All the developers have a limited access to the C, right, to the C system. Uh, when I say limited access, I'm referring by using a role-based system. For example, they have a developer role, not an admin, uh, to the C system. But um, if they can execute arbitrary binaries, for example, netcat is a very common uh, binary that is, is the most of the Unix systems, they could create a reverse cell. Um, if the C system doesn't doesn't control the access to the internet, a malicious developer could open a remote backdoor in your C system, right? Then let's see uh, in a small demo uh, as a video. Ah, uh, oh, okay, this is a fun picture. <laughs> okay, in this video, we'll uh, put netcat to listen in the one, two, three, four port, right? Waiting for connection. And then in Jenkins, very famous, right? We'll create an script console, right? Nothing is strained until now at the moment. But, but the thing that we are doing is to connect to our netcat service that just put listen right uh, you can see we created the errors a reverse cell and in this case we use metasploit table metas yeah uh, metasploit to connect and in at this moment we have a cell in the C system in this case is a uh, Microsoft Windows right it's very easy this this attack but very very powerful Cesar okay Let's talk about a little the, the GitHub actions, uh, the evil GitHub actions, in fact. Uh, the code that you, we, the, that you use in your GitHub actions, who is written by? Maybe they have evil objectives. Uh, we all know how a contributor on GitHub action starts to send all environment variables to their botnet to harbor secrets. This vulnerability is known as code cov. Uh, um, please use trusted popular actions and check the latest changes frequently. Also, it's very important that uh, a, a agents has a good firewall and don't access the internet if they are not meant to. Um, also, uh, your pipeline has critical deploy information and be aware of that kind of actions that you use and how they use this information. Uh, Danny said a moment ago that environment variables are very important because our secrets lie there. And it's a very important thing that I want to stop in a, a minute to talk about. Please protect your environments. Okay, next. 
other thing that commonly we found on, on the say CD systems is a, a mighty bot. Deliver software in a company is a very demanding task. We feel tempted by shortcuts, like do all CI actions by only one and almighty bot account. If someone has bot credentials for some automation tasks, he has access to everything. And that is so spooky. Use correct amount of service accounts to the tasks that require it. Keep in mind that the bot user can do what developer demands because most uh, continuous delivery systems use uh, software to uh, do their actions and you can write any kind of software that you want there. So if uh, the bot has all permissions in by extension, the developer has all permissions too. Okay, let's move to the next, that's the evil agent. Okay, if you can download and execute any program, you can use a continuous deployment agent to perform any evil action that you want. But we see, as we see in a moment ago, Danny opened a netcat, but uh, it is in that case, the netcat is in their machine, but you can do the same from the pipeline. You can download a binary, a static link uh, in your pipeline and execute it. So um, if file permissions are, are not correct, uh, the pipeline also can infect with malware an agent and uses as, as a zombie on a botnet. So be aware of that. Okay, let's see in this small video how uh, this attack works. Uh, a moment, I, uh, that's it. Now we see, we will see how we can, from a pipeline with any problem, download and execute any software that we want. And we can do this because this Jenkins is uh, with the default configurations of security and with no internet control access. That's the curl for the download. We are downloading map. Yes, a map that is a very useful software to look your surrounding and maybe a little step. And that is running and looking all of all our network. That's it. Okay. Yes. So we know that that's the thing. Uh, how we learn from this? Limit internet access in the pipeline, perform a correct hardening of the infrastructure and fix the execution permissions. And we say that uh, Jenkins is on the default settings. Okay, move next. Docker Hub leak, uh, th that's a very interesting one. Some useful Docker command can publish on Docker Hub easily, and you can send Docker image full of secrets to a public Docker Hub profile without even notice. If you are using your R computer, it's very common mistake do a Docker publish and publish to the wrong place. So uh, you must to ask yourself if you have your own container registry, if you check that your Docker files are correctly uh, right, and uh, your pipelines has permission and access to publish in a Docker hub. Um, it's also good practice, allow only some agents to publish image and check Docker layer contents. Also check the Docker file. And we have a notice, uh, uh, a new there, uh, misconfigured Docker registry could leak confidential data, lead to a full scale compromise and interrupt the business operations. It happened that thing that I say a moment before. A Docker publish and we have a very big problem. Okay, move next. Keep your API safe. Nowadays, it's common to have several APIs in your company. So usually some programs call to company APA. Also, uh, do not open all APA to the internet, only those who need it. So ask yourself, do you use the APA? Do you control the CI, CD network access? Some tips, disable access from unnecessary places with a firewall, we, we say it several times. Do not install vulnerable plugins. We have the two security CVA the, uh, there in the, in the screen to see. 
Okay, more things. Source code ransomware. Have your own source, source control server is very convenient, but keep it safe, it's not so easy. Infect these kind of servers with ransomware or create a ransomware that use client permissions to wipe and cipher user repositories is already a user technique. Don't keep the details of this API on public code and keep a correct authentication and authorization methods for these kind of servers. More suitable to happen those that use their own machines and mix personal and professional configurations. Please don't do that. Um, and also if a ransomware exists is because it works, check permissions, do backups. Uh, another tip, another new about uh, uh, hackers doing this, okay? Move next. The fact docker. An evil docker layer can contain software and grow massively on deploy. This can prevent to your company, as a sample, to deploy security up the security path. Try to use only official images and keep a local image repository if you can. Sometimes a fact docker appears as the result of bad coding, but can slow all your company delivery actions massively. Okay. <laughs> okay. I love the picture, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> The Evil Docker Twin, very easy to perform and very dangerous. Build an Evil Docker container is very easy and poison your cache also it is. Keep under control your Docker builds and please use layer verification in your Docker files, that numbers that go just the right of from Alpine maybe. Okay, push a new Docker image from your pipeline called Alpine is a simple test to check this if you can anyone on your organization can do a huge damage in your deploy systems because they have all a, a complete layer to enjoy. Okay, move next. Okay, uh, the greedy service consumer, these things uh, we see happening sometimes. If you use an external service, be aware of the limits. Some API limit the amount of calls by IP. If your continuous integration or continuous deployment has only one public IP and uh, you have a greedy user of one service, you can deplete the limits and let other services stack in your pipelines. Um, keep in mind things like GitHub, big companies, a lot of person accessing GitHub, and then all the thing stop to work because you reach the limit. Okay, now move next. The deployment step. Okay, well now we see the map. We are not on the right side of the map. Uh, um, uh, we are <laughs> almost in production. Okay, uh, room free internet. Production sec secrets lay on CI, CD until they are deployed. So security concerns must be as important as production. We usually forgotten resource is Internet access. Keep a correct firewall configurations to avoid secret exfiltrations or leaks. Uh, we we say this a lot of times. Okay, a Trojan jar. Uh, Java rely on jar files to deploy most of the time. Tools to build a fat jar or manipulate it are broadly available and easy to use. The Java native interface also allowed the execution or arbitrary executables. Keep an eye on the Java jar supply chain, please. It's very, very, very easy and extremely hard to detect without correct tools like our own artifact repository. Okay, go ahead, Danny. Okay. Oh. Now, okay, uh, the zip bomb, okay. Sibom is an old-fashioned attack, but it can be very dangerous in our C system. Uh, it's very easy to create and explode them, right? In a brief, uh, a Sibom attack consists in a special created SIM file that when a user tries to uncompress it, the Sibom get a huge amount on the space in your hard disk, almost infinite, until your hardest is completely full. 
right? RC bombs format could be easily detected, right, with a good hardening. But there is a new SIP uh, bomb variant that is very hard to detect. Um, <laughs> and and in this case, we have a problem, right? Okay, um, the most interesting uh, about seed bomb is that there is a lot of software that use SIP as a package system, like Microsoft Word, Java with the jar files, uh, with the Word files, Excel, a lot of. Uh, there is some application servers that deploy new applications that was packaged as a SIP format, like Apache Tomcat, that deploy WAR files automatically. The WAR files are seed format package file, as, uh, as I, I just say, that um, what, okay, the question is, what if we create a malicious seed bomb file, rename as, as uh, a WAR file, and try to deploy this application in, um, uh, in a server like Apache Tomcat? What happened if we do that? Because it's a very, very easy to do that. If you control the, um, uh, the, the CD or C um, workflow. This is a, a small video with uh, a, a sample about that. Okay, before we played it, um, uh, let's see what happens. Uh, we have split the terminal in three rows. The first one the, on the top is when hardest free space before deploy the, the zip bomb, right? The second one is referring to the free memory, memory and swap memory. And third one, we can see the CPU usage. All right, now let's play video. Okay, no, ah, oh, yeah, okay. Now uh, we copy the zip bomb to the Apache Tomcat directory. When Apache Toka detected the new file, they try uh, to deploy it. Right, we copy the war file right, via SSH or via security copy. Then we can see how the, uh, the amount of this that the zip pump uh, get the, free, the memory until in one or more or less system breakdown because the disk is full. If the disk is full means that we also haven't free virtual memory for allocating new processes, even for that the root user can log in in a console to stop the zip bomb, right? And even more, um, this attack was uh, more uh, one hour in this case, more or less, is very, very difficult to detect it. Right? It's, it's a funny attack, funny if you are the attacker, of course. Right? <laughs> okay. okay, to prevent this kind of attack, you must perform uh, accurate hardening of your system by limiting how much resources a process can get. It's very simple, easier, but uh, very effective, right? Okay, the memory bomb. Um, not so no, not so known as uh, the memory bond can be sneaky as a bad building process and kill your machines again and again. Keep in mind that swap is also affected and can take down your machine. What is a memory bomb? A memory bomb is very similar to the zip bomb, but attacks your memory, your active memory, your RAM. Uh, but also your uh, swap, that is standard RAM in the end. Okay, what happens if you run a memory bomb in a continuous integration or continuous delivery system? What if the continuous integration is deployed as a multi-agent? Let's see a little diagram to see. Okay, that's the sequence of events. First, you put a memory bomb in your Jenkins file. Remember that Jenkins file is source code. You can put everything you want. So the Jenkins master sends the job to a Jenkins agent and runs the pipeline and the memory bomb. So the Jenkins agent break down. Jenkins master detected that the job was not finished and sent the same job to another Jenkins agent. And the same happened again. So go to step dos, <laughs> to step two, <laughs> sorry. Okay, move forward. 
That's it. Do we, yeah. uh, we have more yeah. agents? Uh, now the demo. Let's play it and see what happened with the memory. We execute the pipeline. Okay, wait a minute. That's it. We will see the output. In that case, we have an uh, executable file called bomb.sh. And in a few moments, all system will halt and will not finish. Even the machine breaks. That's it. <laughs> we read. Everything is frozen. Even the Jenkins itself froze. And you can survive this. Uh. Chicken is compared to frozen. Yes, you, nothing to do here. <laughs> you okay. keep all the things. Wait a minute. No recover from no. this. No, no recover. We are trying to, but the uh, system is unresponsive. In this moment, I'm trying to open a console or do anything, but I can't because I execute this attack on my own machine. And oh. Oh. <laughs> that's the thing. Sorry. No, it's OK. Let's, uh, let's continue. Uh, just to know that my memory bomb is a less known but more effective, and even more effective in Docker, because Docker has different controls yeah. to the, for memory and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, today, powerful computers can die very fast with no clue that what pipeline is responsible for. It's, it's a very fast, as you can see, and in a couple of seconds, it's unresponsive, unresponsive at, at all. Uh, you can lose all your agents before you find where the problem is. You have this kind of behavior that all your agents are dying very fast, one and, and then another one and then another one. Check this kind of uh, scripts. Okay, let's move to the next one, bomb. And, and more traditional, the fork bomb is uh, the all good fork bomb. When you uh, open uh, a lot of process and then your system breaks down. The all fork bomb stills, still is a problem. Easy to execute from a prime line can have similar effects than memory bomb. And it's more easy to detect if you have very, very good logs. But only in that case, let's see what happened with the fork bomb, it's the, the behavior is almost the same. Okay, let's go to play it. That's it. With with a, a very less criteria from my perspective, I execute this also on my machine and uh, die very very fast also. Okay, now it's downloaded the, the files from the JIT. And uh, now execute, it say that it's success, but the system is also unresponsive. And down in the image, I don't know if you can see, but the number on orange on the left down, that is like 800 is our CPU usage on my machine. and. It's completely gone. Thousand, twelve hundred, a lot of CPU usage, and then go down my machine also. Totally <laughs> die. Very fast. As you can see, that's real time. In, in a matter of seconds, we have a, an, a responsive system. OK, we can move next. Yeah. Now, I'm pretty sure next step. Now we are focusing on the final step of the workflow, the productions. Um, is your API owners, right? New applications are built by using APIs. Uh, most of you, or, or most of your applications implement API to perform the most common tasks that usually day a day we use, for example, I don't know, Twitter, Facebook, and so on. But the, the new API is the, the, is the fact, uh, a standard, right? But uh, you don't know, um, you have not a contract in the most of the cases 
but you don't know if your APIs responses that you uh, expect that they uh, should uh, respond, right? And that the question is, are you sure that your API responses don't add more fields that we define in the contract? <laughs> Are, uh, are you sure that your API doesn't respond a different, a different type of data that we define in the contract? Or are you sure that a malicious developer can use your API to exfiltrate data by using extra fields or your API? Did you check that your API are honest? Okay. <clears throat> um, the, um, the answer in this case is very, very, very complicated. Um, you should check that your API contract uh, are following. Um, in this case, we propose the uh, two tools. The first one, AP Tech, is an open source tool set for working with APIs. And the second one is a product um, for a vendor that's uh, have test cases to check this specific um, issues. It tests if your API are honest, right? Uh, we don't put more tool because uh, we don't find it as open source or another provider, right? Right, keep secret safe. Um, sometimes uh, we forgot that Docker images are only a package software that could be opened by someone in their computer. As we don't put sensitive data uh, and into an artifact that will be privileged in a public repository, we must not put secret and sensitive data inside a container. This is obvious, right? But by using a simple great command we can find expression that contain password in a Docker images after we mount those images in my local machine. And we can find easily API keys, Amazon access keys, etc. cetera. Uh, okay, this image, okay. As you can see in this image in 2019, the cyber threat intelligence team where where analyze a thousand of Docker images published on Polvino repositories, not only Docker Hub, and they found a lot of secrets inside them. There's, this is uh, a real fault, it's, and it's, it's very common. Then, Daniel, so, sorry to interrupt you. We have about yeah. one or two minutes uh, left. So if possible, please. Uh, please, us. okay, 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 okay. We're directly to the last demo on the infrastructure. Uh, the evil alias. Um, this attack is old fashioned but useful, right? Uh, if someone with access to a machine could write a terminal alias, it doesn't matter the cell they uh, are using, it, it could be anyone. Um, the, attacker, the attack consists in replace a legitimate command with an alias that perform actions before run the real command, right? Um, Okay, as you can see this uh, image, uh, some example about um, evil alias, right? But with a demo, it's nice. <laughs> in this case, in this demonstration, we are use Netcat and listen to 1990-1999 port. And we use the, we create a new alias for the ls command. Uh, when a user type or execute an ls command, this alias will send all of the environment variables to our, um, our server. Yeah. Very easy, but very powerful. All right. Now we, we load the new configuration and type ls. Right. And that's it. Very easy. We receive all of uh, environment variables and it could be secrets and so on. Right. Um, finally, this is our uh, infra. Uh, okay. Let me check if I have. Okay. I have no more demos. Right. Uh, it's very common to deploy the system, the production system, uh, and share network. The, um, the only thing in this case is please use isolated network for C and 
the, as easy as uh, the environment uh, than your production system. All right. Okay. I'm sorry, but I have, I have no time. Please, the, the conclusion if you use BPC, VLANs, and something similar. Um, that's it. The conclusion. The wrap up is all this kind of stuff. We have no no time to this. This is only the type of iceberg. Please be aware of all of this, and we can ask us. We can reach us in social media. Okay, next, uh, Danny, and uh, you can see our Twitter. We are very active on Twitter. Uh, ask anything, any any question that you have, please. No. Um, all right, that's it. Thanks.